excuse me, our Bible study here at New Life Experience Church, <clears throat> where our pastor is our Pastor John, District Elder John Anderson. Um, we just thank you for tuning in with us, and we believe that our Bible study is going to be very interesting. We do have a word from God. If you was here Sunday, or if you listen to the uh, Sunday uh, broadcast, we will be um, still piggy piggybacking on what the pastor was talking about, about healing and stuff. Because uh, even in this time with everything going on, we do know that God is a healer. And he do want our bodies to be healed, and he do want our minds to be healed. And it's some of the same scriptures what you heard before, but we're going to look at them in a little more detail and stuff. But then I think you will and, and uh, real, really enjoy it. Our first scripture, uh, the first where we will be basing everything from, will come from the book of St. Luke. And if you need a title for this here, it's just going to be simple, something like, Hear and Be Healed. Hear and Be Healed. But it was... Uh, I like starting off with uh, St. Luke because um, St. Luke was the only, uh, uh, I, he was the only Gentile that we have recording of that wrote um, one of the Gospels, the Gospels about Jesus Christ. There's a lot of history we can say about St. Luke, but uh, we're going to try to uh, not go into that tonight. We're going to go into just one of the key scriptures, what he said and how everything we're going to tie this lesson up to. Uh, into that's uh, Saint Luke the fifteenth Saint Luke the fifteenth chapter verse five I mean chapter five verse fifteen. It said, "But so much the more when there a fame abroad of him, we're talking about Jesus, a great multitude came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities." Uh, this is when they heard about Jesus, uh, when they first, they, they wanted to come and be healed. They heard about him. The wonders is, is what went out first about Jesus, the wonders and the signs, what was going on. Because you remember when John was in, uh, when uh, John the baptizer was in prison, he sent the word back, he sent one of his messengers back and asked how was everything going, and they said the lame was, be the lame was being healed, the blind was seeing. He was telling them, people start looking at him about uh, the infirmities, and they were looking for signs. And that's what, healing is one of the most accurate signs that let you know, um, and, and, and take this for what I'm saying, that let you know that you are being saved. Amen, amen. When you can call God, not, now I'm not saying if you're not healed that you're not saved. Now don't go off, don't go off in a tantrum like that. I'm not saying nothing like that. I'm just saying that's one of the signs. When you know that you're connected to someone and you can go to him for yourself. When you know you're connected to God and you know who got all of the healing virtues and everything, that you, know, you, you just know you can be healed. And that's what the people was looking for. And we have to get ready and be looking for that kind of expectation ourselves too. They had heard about the fame of Jesus. They have heard about his shadow heal, healing people, heard about uh, the girl, what he raised from the dead. They had heard about all of that stuff. And one of the other things they heard, they heard about the man that had the devils that didn't know how to, uh, didn't, he didn't know how to uh, live among uh, normal people. He was out in the graveyard living like that. But when Jesus just spoke the word and he became healed, he became whole. He became healed. They was expecting signs and wonders like that. And we are looking at this time of this time in our life and this time and this season, a lot of us might not be healed physically, but even though God can do it, but when we can get our minds ready to be healed. You know, uh, uh, sometimes you have to get your mind ready to take some of those pills the doctor tells you to take. 
Sometimes you have to get your minds ready to uh, that broken arm to put it in a slam. You know, everything you ain't got to just be waiting on it. You know, you say, I'm waiting on my healing. Y'all stay with me right now if you're there. Stay with me. Uh, and, and you just have to get your mind ready for something. You have to get your mind ready. Uh, when, when you become into God to be healed from that cancer, be healed from that tumor, you got to first get it in your mind because faith is the object. Uh, is the subject is the object of things hoped for but not yet seen you got to believe that that tumor is gone you got to believe it you got it, it, you you just got to believe it and when you believe it god manifested if you believe on him and it's not always of a land on of hands all the time uh saint luke said he that is whole need not a physician in other words, don't be getting mad because you got to go to a doctor to get it. God is still doing the healing. It is the body. And, and I just want to serve you notice that the doctors are only practicing medicine. And uh, God, Jesus, they don't have to practice medicine. They know they can speak it. They can give you what you need right there, and it happened. But the doctors are just practicing medicine. And if the healing comes in time, uh, if it, you know, you have to... You have to um, you have to just wait on that. But that's, I wanted, they heard about Jesus. They heard, they heard that um, Jesus was doing signs and wonders, and the people got their mind together, and they was getting ready to go and look for something. Once you get your mind together. The Bible declares in uh, St. John, and in, in 1 John 3, 8, that Jesus was manifested for the purpose of destroying the works of the devil. He was here to destroy the works of the devil. Yes, God don't mean for us to be uh, uh, crippled and none of that stuff. They manifested, uh, he was manifest to get rid of the works of the devil. And when we can get that in our mind, that when we have these things, I know some people tried to say sometimes Paul had an affirmative in his flesh, but he said that, uh, you know, if it hadn't been for that, that wouldn't have kept him safe. But that's in a whole different thing. But God do not mean for our bodies and our mind to be like that. Jesus came here to destroy the works of the devil. He came, here on earth, he came here on this earth to display his power and to declare that he know that, you know, declare who he was. He didn't have to uh, come here and uh, just, he, he knew who he was. He wanted you all, he wanted us to know who he was. He came here to make that clear and to declare who he was and to declare that he loved us. Everyone knows the scripture we always talks about. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed on him should not perish but have everlasting love. And that's the love that Jesus came here to tell us about. And when we hear about the wonders and the sign that he is going to give that we believe that's the love. When we hear about the love, when we hear about it, that, that's when we get our mind. Uh, just, just think about it. When you hear that it's a, a healing campaign going somewhere and someone get healed, everybody comes over there. God is over there working, that the glory of God is showing. But they get their minds together and they come in expecting that. And we have to, when we hear about those kind of things, we got to be ready and get our minds together to do that. When we hear about the healing, oh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him, uh, they shall not perish. Oh, God loved us just that much. He demonstrated his love for us while we was yet sinners. He died for us. He dem demonstrated his love. He demonstrated his love for us when he came down and he died on the cross. We just got through talking about the Easter story and everything. When he went through all of that, he went through that for us that we don't have to go through all of that no more. That in our minds, we don't have to worry about who, what's going on, uh, if we got trying to commit suicide. Uh, we don't have to worry about in our minds what's going on in our house because God is going to give us uh, the healing of our mind and we're going to have the peace that we know that our house is protected when we go, when he's gone. 
we talking about the healing of the body, the healing of the mind. When we get our minds ready and God heals our mind, we don't have to worry about that car because God loved us. And he need to heal our minds sometimes. We don't have to worry about uh, where the next car note is coming from, about if this car going to run, about who is uh, going to come in my house when I go home. God give you the peace of mind. He can heal your mind just like that. And, and, and that's a wonder in it when it's self. Just think about when a saint of God gets saved, uh, one that used to worry all the time, and I uh, just can't get this right. And they looked like they was just on edge all the time. But it's just something when they get saved and God fill them with the Holy Ghost. And God heals their mind and let them know that everything going to be all right. And that's part of the healing what we need about our body. We don't have to worry about uh, uh, in this life that if I end my life, things is going to be better because we can have it better right here and God can go right, roll with us right through all our troubles. That's when you can get your mind together. Uh, you're saying, preacher, what are you trying to say? I'm trying to say Jesus can answer all things. Jesus can heal your mind. Jesus can heal your body. Jesus can heal any situation. that, that uh, He can heal, heal any situation. And when we hear about it, when you hear the saints of God out in the streets, when they tell you the things they used to do, they don't do no more. That's because God had healed their mind. And that's the things that you look looking to hear. That's a sign and a wonder of God. That's something that is being talking about, talked about that you can get your mind together. You get your mind together and you can hear about it. Oh, the testimonies of the saints and the testimonies of the Christians. Uh, when you hear them, they, I, I, I like the testimonies when they stand up and say, if he don't do it, I know he can. That's a faith when someone can stand on it right there. That's a healing in the mind, and that's the kind of healing that we need today. We get our mind healed and then our body that they can come right there. But Jesus demonstrated his love for us. While we was yet sinners, he died on the cross. He showed us when he didn't say a word that uh, sometimes we get healed or we get that new job when we get our minds ready and we learn not to talk sometimes when someone is scolding us. We just stop and watch the salvation of the Lord. Oh, he can do that. His love, all, he also uh, manifests his love by his compassion towards us. And it that he's uh, that he that we know with his the compassion that we are desiring to heal him. Remember, uh, he healed us. We remember uh, the uh, lady what came to Jesus asking him to heal her daughter. He and and the compassion that he showed her. He looked at her. You know, he was getting ready to work a miracle, and sometimes he had to do it like this. And he looked at the lady, and the lady, she was, uh, wasn't uh, from the Jewish race or nothing, came up to him and said, Oh, good master, just heal my daughter, heal my daughter. And he looked at her, and then he said, Should I give the children bread to the dogs? And then when she heard words, and sometimes the compassion of what we got to say, because uh, just think if someone would have said that to you, how mad you would have got. And you would have turned around and just uh, just said a lot of things and probably went, in, went to cussing and doing a lot of stuff. But when God have healed your mind and someone come back to you with a rough word like that, calling you a dog, calling you something that you know that you're not, you know what I'm talking about. And all she did was just look at him and said, even the dog deserved the crumbs that found from, from falls from the master's table. And God saw that and he saw and he felt that compassion for her. And he didn't, and the compassion was he didn't even have to go to her house. All he had to do was speak the word, and the lady daughter was healed. And that's how uh, we are going to be sometimes when God heal our mind, uh, heal our mind, and we get ready to go somewhere uh, uh, when our kids are being sick, uh, our kids are not acting right in school, we'll be able to say, uh, God, protect him in that schoolroom. God heal him, close his mouth in that schoolroom, close his mouth right here, oh, and we can be able to speak the word, and God can do it. We can heal it like that. 
Oh, yes, that's healing right there. When you look at healing, a lot of people just, I said from the beginning, time, healing is not always doing your body. It's in our mind. When we can get our mindset different, God can heal us like that. Oh, the Apostle Peter declared that God anointed him uh, with the Holy Ghost and, and with power where he, where he was going about doing good, healing the sick. And the oppressed, uh, who those who was oppressed by the uh, by the devil. We remember, I believe it was in the fourth chapter of the book of Acts. Peter was going into the gates at the uh, western gate of the temple, what's called beautiful, and uh, he saw this man that was sitting there that was lame from his mother, who was uh, lame from his mother's womb, and he was asking alms, asking for a penny, asking for half of a penny, a shackle, right there. And Peter looked down upon him, and we saw the compassion of God. Uh, the man, mind, when he got ready, he told him, silver and gold have I none. The man he could have, if his mind didn't have the minds, didn't have the right mindset, when the man, when Peter said, silver and gold have I none, he could have put his cup down. But he kept his hand up. He said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give thee a rise and walk. And sometimes we have to get our minds ready. For that, it ain't going to always be the nickels and the dimes that we're looking for. It's not going to always be the blessing in the car that's going to get us to the job, that's going to heal all our situation. It, sometimes it's just going to be someone speaking a word to you. They're giving you a little encouragement right there. Uh, as you're going on to work, that something happened. I knew uh, this lady back home, uh, she wouldn't ride to work with no one. and She was saved. And uh, she was sanctified, but uh, she, she had to walk sometime two miles, and she couldn't get her sons or her daughters to take her to work. She would walk to work. But one time on her way to work, it was someone out in the streets that got hit by a car on her way. And she was able to stay there and pray with them until the car come, until the ambulance come. And as you like that, that was in a healing situation right there. Sometimes with our bodies, if we're not walking uh, in our mind, we can't get somewhere where we're trying to go. Sometimes we just need to stand there and just wait on God. And God will let you know that he can heal that situation. Uh, he can heal that person right there. And we just have to be ready and just get our minds ready for that. Oh, yes, Jesus, he is the healer. He is a healer. Uh, he's the same yesterday, today, and he'll be the same forever. Um, as, you, uh, as you are seeking your healing, uh, healing the touch uh, from whatsoever issue you might have, all you need is to believe and have the faith and the promises because his promises is always yes. It's always yes. Uh, I, I remember someone told me when I was living in Ohio that this person, she said that God told her, that she was going to have a baby. Oh, her and her husband had been married for a long time, and there still was no babies there. But she stood on the word, and she believed. I remember uh, even some of the saints laughing about her, saying that she was getting up there in age. But around 41 or 42, the lady started getting big, started gaining weight, and all of a sudden, the baby came. There's one thing, if God say he's going to heal you, he's going to heal you. If he say, if you go down in prayer and God tells you they're going to save those kids, that they're going to be a mind change and a healing of the mind with the kids, just believe it. You can't wonder. It might not look like it all the time. We might be laughing at you when you say, uh, this kid is going to be a doctor. Uh, God told me this kid is going to be a preacher. But we're looking at him and he's cussing and fighting every day. But something could happen overnight you never can tell i know i know that's how it works like that and we are and we and we need to do that because the healing angels are everywhere and they will come down and do what god has said they would do even with the dedication of our kids that's a healing in that we dedicate our kids to to the lord and we say lord we want you to protect them we want you to bring them into the church we want you to uh, let them live a good life and have this here. And then as soon as we get through with the prayer, we have a good time, we go out and eat, and we forget that prayer of what was prayed on them. And I'm just thinking about the time, and this is uh, Lynn, a little testimony right here that uh, my oldest son, 
that uh, I, he was the one that always sat in the back of the church, didn't want to have nothing to do with the church, and never was doing nothing. But he came to church all the time. Can't say he was the first one to get dressed, but he came to church. And right now, this young man went to the army and everything, and he learned how to trust God, and he started believing in the things that were said to God. And now he calls me every day or every other day talking about the scripture. This was the one I didn't see it in it, but I know I had dedicated him to God. And I remember when the preacher prayed over him and said, by faith, you would be a minister or something like that. And uh, a lot of, uh, he's not declaring that he's a minister. A lot of people are saying that he's one. He is telling them about the oneness of God and telling them about the baptism in Jesus' name and telling them about things that he has seen in his life that was a healing that something had to get in his mind. You know, that's the power of the Holy Ghost that had spoken. And it looked like that something is not going right. But when God get in the minds of uh, our kids and stuff, that's the healing that he can bring or that, that comes around. Even if it wasn't a healing for him, it was a healing for me. Because when I hear that kind of stuff, I, I know everything's going to be all right. If you like me, you raise your kids to be a success. But when you hear them start calling on the name of Jesus or believing in the scripture and talking about what God can do and I'm waiting on God and if it's not in the scripture, he don't want to believe it. When you see young people saying stuff like that, I say that's a hit. that right there was a healing to my mind and was a healing to me. Oh, we just got through uh, talking about the Easter season, and I'm trying not to get ahead of myself. But uh, Jesus, as he bore the cross and stuff, and as he was walking uh, down to Calvary, he was uh, taking on all burdens so we didn't have to worry about nothing. In other words, he was healing us. In other words, our mind, when something come up against us, we should notice and say stuff like, Oh, Jesus bore that for me. I'm not going to worry about it. And have a peace of mind in it. And have a peace of mind all the way through it. In the book of Isaiah, the eager eye prophet in the, 50, uh, in, uh, the 53rd uh, chapter, he said, and he's talking about Jesus. He said, Jesus was wounded for our transgression. And he was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of his peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we of heal. In other words, the bruising of Jesus' body give us the right and give us the comfort in our mind that we can be healed and we can have a mind that is like, Creed, like Christ. Oh, yes, uh, he was wounded for our transgression, knowing that in our mind, if we slip, because, you know, some people, when they get saved, they try to live in a cocoon, and they want just everything around them and everything to look right. But God saved us so we can save the world. Uh, we got to be able to uh, be able to get out. That, in other words, when we went in our Jesus was wounded for our transgressions. When we transgress, uh, if something else happens, we just, oh God, you was wounded for me, and I know I can get pick myself up and keep going. You have to be ready. You have to be ready for all of that. That's a healing right there. It's a di different thing to be a transgressor and the one that keep practicing in sin. And when God heals us and heals our body, uh, we might be a transgressor uh, every now and then, but God will let us know and heal us from that. And we have to know that he was wounded for our transgression. If I should fall, I don't have to lay there. I don't have to keep doing that. I don't have to keep staying there. That's what we have to get our minds ready. Get our mind ready because anything can be out there. And the snares that might get us and might get, get in us. But we have to be ready for the transgression that he was uh, wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. In other words, sometimes we don't think the things that is wrong. We have it all up in us. And uh, we're thinking wrong about people. We're looking at people wrong. We just can't see it and stuff like that. And when we get our minds together and we stop thinking about the people uh, who uh, just uh, we say don't look right, 
we can know that he was bruised for our iniquities. He was bruised for our wrong thoughts that we had. He was bruised for when we wanted to uh, cheat on our taxes. Amen. Somebody listen to me now. Uh, he was bruised when we had that in our when we had that in our mind and stuff. But he, in our iniquities, and he was bruised for it, that we can uh, get up and say, God, forgive me, and go on for that. He was chastised for our peace. In other words, for our peace of mind, we've been talking about that. In our minds, when things are not going right, we don't have to worry about what if this job is going to close down tomorrow. We don't have to worry about if that car is going to run because his chastisement of our peace was up on him. Because he bore that cross and he carried to Calvary, I don't have to worry about the... Uh, I don't have to worry about the peace. Uh, I don't have to worry about things because his peace will be up on me. And then the other thing say, he, with his stripes, we are healed. Every time they hit him with that uh, whip went on his back, every time he was cut, every time he was pierced, uh, the time he was pierced, uh, all of that was for our healing. That was for our physical healing. We don't have to be we don't have to be lame. We don't have to have the things, but uh, every we don't have to have the broke arms and the bad minds and the cancer. We don't have to even have to have the diabetes and all of that. Because when it starts in our mind, we know that he was uh, he was every strip that every stripes that he had, we are healed. And even if we have to keep on taking the insulin or keep on taking the pills, we are healed every day that we are alive because some people have made it through. We are being healed every day we go through it. Even with your high blood pressure in your heart, heart attack, you are being healed. If you didn't die with the first one, God healed you and you are here another day. Every day we are being healed all day long. If we made it through the coronavirus, we are being healed. You are being healed. Get your mindset that God is a healer. He is the one that kept it away from you. He's the one that kept the common cold from you. He's the one that regulating your blood pressure and stuff. God is the one that is the healer. And with his stripes, we are healed. We are healed. And with all of that being said, we have to remember that we are like sheeps. If you know the history, if you know anything about the nature of a sheep, a sheep is a person that is a wanderer. And it takes a leader to lead them. And that's why, and we are led by the word of God. And we won't go astray. Long as we keep the word of God before us, as long as we read the word and study in his word, no matter what, we will not stray away from him. We are, uh, we, they say, all we, all we like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone in his own way. And the Lord has laid up on him the iniquities of us all. In other words, Jesus, Jesus was our perfect example. We saw how he took everything in strive. He went to the cross. His mindset, even back from the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, Master, he said, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. And, and that's when you get your mind like that, if it's God's will that we have to go through this here. Because of your, if, uh, say if you're not healed, but because you're not healed, and the way some people see you go through, that can be a testimony right there. I knew this evangelist. She was uh, in the hospital, sick, dying of cancer. Uh, they had no hope for her, and, and she was on all types of stuff. And at the last minute, she said she did not want the morphine or none of that stuff, that she was ready to go if it was the master for her to go. And in the middle of it, she saw this nurse who kept coming in there to her, looking at her, kept coming in here waiting on her, waiting for stuff. And in all her pain on her deathbed, she got up and she wanted to sit up and said she wanted to pray with her. Because she wanted that lady minds to be right. That's what I'm talking about. God is healing her right there so someone else can be saved. You know, when, when, when we're used by God, God can use us to heal someone else. And the nurse today, when I hear her testimony, she talks about how she got saved through a lady that was dying. Now, just think about that. 
Someone had to go through all of that. God didn't heal you, but he bared with you for you to go through that for someone else to get saved. Not only did she get saved, she got her daughters and some of her relatives were saved. That's why I say even uh, at his worst, if we just believe that God can do it and God has done it, God is the healer. If he's not healing you, he's healing someone around you. Just get your mindset ready that, God, you heal my mind that when I walk, everyone can see me and you can heal them through me, through my life, God. Let my life be the one that is healing someone because they know what you went through and they saw what your parents went through and they know you are different. When someone see that testimony, they can be saved and they can be healed. I say let them hear about the wonders and everything that is of God. It is all in the mindset. And saints of God that is listening to me, if you've been healed before, go and tell someone that you've been healed, if they have been healed. If you have been delivered from some, tell someone that you have been delivered from because God can use your word. All the people's need to do is hear and be healed. If they can hear what he have done for you, they will be able to listen and say, if he did it for you, he can do it for me. Because sometimes they're only going to read you. So if the people's here, they can be healed. Oh, most precious God, we thank you for it right now. Oh, God, we thank you for your word right now. We thank you for the people that are listening. Let them be able to take this word and let them go, go on and tell someone about what's going on. Oh, God, we thank you for doing it right now, God. Oh, God, everyone that is listening to me, let them come around. If they have an infirmity in their body, let them touch their infirmity right now, God. Oh, God, we speak healing virtue as we speak right now, God. Heal that man's shoulder right now, God. The one that have a pain in it right now, God, just touch it right now. Oh, God, the one that have a mind that is thinking dirty things right now, God, we ask that you wash their mind right now, God. Let them touch their head right now, God, and you can deliver it right now. Oh, God, if they're able with a back problem right now, God, touch that back right now, God. We know that you can do it. Oh, God, you is a mind regulator right now. Let them know that they got to get it from you, God. Oh, God, we thank you for doing it right now. Oh, God, in all of that, we ask that you heal someone tonight of high blood pressure right now, God. Oh, God, regulate it. When they get up in the morning, they're going to say, I don't feel like I used to feel anymore. Oh, God, we thank you for doing it right now. Oh, God, someone that have, that, uh, have the diabetes, God. God, we ask that you regulate their sugar right now, God. Oh, God, let them lay hands on themselves right now. We speak the, right now to it right now. Oh, just touch it right now, God. Oh, God, someone that has tumors right now, decrease the tumors right now. Oh God, just bless them right now. God, let them feel that it's going down. Oh God, this is a word. They have heard your word right now, God. They're believing on you right now. God, we thank you for doing it right now. Oh God, we bless you right now. Oh God, we ask all these blessings in others. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh God, we thank you for the word right now.